Shri Prabhupada did increases because uh, it's just how much difficult it is to communicate across cultures, across generations, across uh, world views. What Prabhupada achieved, it becomes more and more to use a Gilgerish word awesome to put it that way. But I would like to speak three things about Sri Prabhupada that specifically have touched me in the last one year. One, the first was this conviction <coughs> that when Sri Prabhupada was going to America, he composed the song Maki and Bhagavad Dharma. And therein, why he expresses complete dependence on Krishna, Nachao, Nachao, Prabhu, Nachao, Simante. Also, he gives a vision of the strategy that he had. He was going to speak over the Bhagavatam, speak on the Bhagavatam. And he had that faith that Bhagavati Ratha Sita Bhagavata, he or he or she or she or she or if somebody just hears the Bhagavatam, they will become purified, they will become sober. And Prabhupada's prayer to Krishna is that, please give me the words to make the Bhagavatam understandable to them. Alankuta Gori Bharat Kanata Tomar. You, my dear Lord, have the capacity to make my words understandable. So that conviction that the Bhagavatam will work for everyone, that this particular people must hear the Bhagavatam, along with, so I have find three things, compassion, conviction, consideration, compassion. So conviction, Prabhupada said, I don't, I think this will speak the Bhagavatam. Then, I mean, deliberately or not, Prabhupada made by that prayer, please, Make my words understandable to them. The Bengali is Alankrut Kori Bar Kamata Tomar. Alankrut means ornamented. Alanka is ornamented. So now you are capable of ornamenting my words. So, and such the Vila is to see where all Prabhupada has used the word ornament and in what context. So, what struck me in the Bhagavatam it said, Krishna is the ornament of all ornaments, Bhushana and Bhushita. So when we put ornaments in the deities, it is not the deities become more beautiful, but it is rather their beauty becomes manifest to even our mortal mundane vision. So similarly, Krishna's message is, is universally potent, it's universally attractive. But Prabhupada did consider time and place circumstance. And he wanted to phrase the message in a way that would appeal to people. Not in the sense of compromising things, but in the sense of making things attractive. Prabhupada defines realization the first kind of Shri Bhagavatam as to keep the message the same, but present in an interesting way. So, many times, for me personally, this this has become a constant referring within my heart whenever I give a class to a, a new audience. Alangrutha Koribar Kamata Kumar. And you thought, please ornament my word in such a way that it can attract the heads and hearts of people. So Prabhupada was expert in this. And how according to time place circumstances, when he was in India, he was speaking to Indians. The same Prabhupada would one time said that we are not Indians, we are not Americans. But to Indians he would say that this is the Bhagavad Gita is the message of India. And to preach the Bhagavad Gita in India, I have to get people from all over the world. This is your message, why are you not sharing it? And then to Americans in India he would say, uh, all over the world to Americans are considered to be people who work wonderful. Now if you are going to do this Hare Krishna festival, what is the use of your being Americans if you don't do something wonderful for Krishna? <laughs> so, <laughs> so Prabhupada could tug at the heartstrings of people. This few example and the, the memories of those who had personal Prabhupada. So how Prabhupada, when he was talking about 
ornamenting the words. It was not just some word generally. It was speaking in a way that could attract people's hearts. And that brings the last part of his compassion. So his conviction that Bhagavan would work, his consideration that Krishna can make his message attractive to everyone. And he can give us the right words if we just have that desire. And for me, the greatest example of Prabhupada's compassion is not just uh, his uh, going to America, but going to the American Lower East Side. During recently, when I was in, I was in America, I decided to go to do some talks, especially I did some talks in some of the places where people still are into drugs and those kind of places. And they are, they're not just dirty, they're dangerous, dirty, not in a hygienic sense of the they're dangerous places to go. And the fact that Prabhupada was in the elite part of America, in New York, with the yoga mission, which I was to show you, from there he chose to go and live. One devotee who was in New York, he showed me a documentary of the Times 1960s in the Compton culture. How, how people lived over there. It is uh, this inconceivable the, the, the place that people would go over there. Would be, people would be lying with, say, lying with uh, unconscious people have taken drugs, maybe uh, having a spotted nature in their own clothes. And so many people would just die, and America has guns freely available, so there were sharpshooters. And every day Prabhupada was there. And Prabhupada didn't just sit safely in the room where he was. Every day Prabhupada would do promotion and publicity of his program. And how would he do that? The only way he had, he had no money. So he would do, all, do that by going out for long morning walks, or long walks during the day. Recently, we got some testimony of devotees. Uh, some of this one devotee is published a book on Prabhupada in New York. We got a testimony, and he said there are several of people who knew Prabhupada in America, in the New York, better part of the town. They said, Swamiji, first of all, you shouldn't go and stay there. If you stay there, that is not a place to go out for walks. <laughs> but Prabhupada would go out for walks, and the first dedicated batch of disciples that he met was actually doing a walk. He was doing we a walk and there was a high grade local power dealer who was walking on the other side of the road and he saw Swamiji. So I said, maybe I, he was going to take drugs. He thought, maybe I've already taken drugs and gone. I was there, Swamiji, he had the streets go like. <laughs> then a truck came in between and he thought, maybe this hallucination will go away. He said, Swamiji was not only there, he was looking at him. So then, Prabhupada had a single desire and he came over uh, to, across the road to meet Prabhupada. So that compassion is not just in and Prabhu will go to many of the place, you could say the city parts of the city neighborhoods. So Prabhupada went to those places and Prabhupada looked, Prabhupada said that Chanak is actually look for gold even in the Philly place. That was Prabhupada's compassion. He went everywhere. And uh, why did he look? For me, it was just experience to go and just try to have some talks over there. But I realized that to actually cultivate people, to live there, to transform people over there, it's, it's incredible. In the Bhutona Bhavishya, it is something like this has never been done in the past. It will never be done in the future. I'm afraid to share Prabhupada to get an ounce of his conviction, his consideration, his compassion. That I can do some small service in slow session. So, Prabhupada, thank you.